Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the subscribe button for us? It really does help us out. Do you have a modern console that seems like it's running hot or at least the fans running at high speed very often? Well, in today's modern systems, the cooling part of it, the cooling system, is actually fairly complex and fairly heavy duty. They can get plugged up with dust and pet hair over time, and even the thermal grease will eventually break down and cause issues. Unfortunately, this isn't a job for most end users to try to tackle. But in today's video, we're going to take a fat PlayStation 4, tear it down, put in new thermal grease, clean the DVD drive, and get it all back together. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench we have a uh, original or fat uh, PlayStation 4. Uh, this one came to us today because it had a few issues. One of them, it was overheating. Um, I believe the fan is still running, but it may be plugged up. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into it. We're gonna clean out the dust, which I'm sure there's quite a bit of. And also there was a complaint of, it was hard to eject, um, the physical media. So what we're going to also do is pull the DVD drive apart and we're going to clean the rollers. So since this is a cleaning slash maintenance video, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole breakdown on film today. The, uh, there's a couple styles of the, of the fat, uh, playstations, but for the most part, you start by just getting to the hard drive, which is right here. There's one large Phillips to get into that. And it comes out. Then the rest of them are gonna be these security Torx bits. Um, they should be a, a number eight security. And on this one, some of them just have the two, but this one's got the extra, the screws. And just by the looks of it, somebody else has already been in this, which, you know, is common. I don't try to restick the the stickers back down because most of the time they just fall off anyway. So that's how you get to those. So now we've got these four black ones and it's a security number eight. Um, so you got to have the, uh, the hole in the tip here. And they are in at a slight angle. Okay. From here we can get our front cover off. And there's two more screws on top that kind of hold it in place. And depending, this one came off pretty easy. You pull it across the front. A lot of times it gets hung up in this corner and I like to use a, a very small screwdriver just to get under this edge. But like I said, this one's been apart, so it just came right off. Usually after, <laughs> yeah, you, we can see, we can already start to see our dust levels. So here's our fan. But uh, once we get this cover off, we'll have a better understanding what's going on. Um, Let's go ahead and just back this real quick. You always need to keep a vacuum handy with a small brush. Okay, so this is our fan connector. It lifts straight off like a uh, Nintendo Switch battery. Um, but let's go ahead and get the bottom off. We've got our back screws out. And, you know, it's captured from this side. So, you just pull it off like that. 
<laughs> and a lot more dust. And you can see, unfortunately, um, you can see how brown it is. This came out of a house with a smoker. So that dust is gonna be stuck. I'm gonna do a little bit more vacuuming and I'll be right back. Okay, did a little bit more cleanup in the shell and uh, in the top of this. Um, it's allergy season here in Western Pennsylvania and I'm trying to keep dust to a minimum because I do have problems with that. Okay, so now that we've got our shells off, um, we're gonna get our power supply out. Here again, it's using these security Torx bits. You've got three around the edge. And Sony was nice enough to actually mark, you know, screws that you got to remove. They've been doing that forever. Um, I remember cracking open, you know, items back in the 80s and, you know, they were the same way. Um, and you have two Phillips screws and these are kind of long. And depending on which board this is, I haven't even really looked. Um, when you remove these, you have to be a little bit careful, these long screws, because there is a capture nut on the board. Um, we'll see it when we flip it back over. Just uh, be aware that if you have a board like that, it's gonna fall out. All right, so now our screws are out. There's two main contacts on this side, so it usually needs a little pressure to get it up and out from this side. You just gotta wiggle it, move it, and it comes up. Okay. Now we need to remove this plug. You can remove it either from the board or from the power supply, whichever way seems to work the best. So we just removed it from this side. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of times these are choked up with dust. Um, and this one isn't too bad. So we shouldn't have a problem there. Okay, so now if you look here, we have our uh, drive cable and power and we have an antenna because we're gonna have to take this board out to get to the bottom of this heat sink to do um, new thermal paste. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this connector off and it just kind of lifts straight off. Sometimes it's good with tweezers, sometimes it's just fingers. This particular connector, it's the same as here, all you do is push straight down on this pin or on this little plate. And this connector will wiggle out, okay? Now, if we look here, there's two little ears, and I can't tell you how many times I've gotten into a PlayStation 4 that these ears are ripped off because they don't, whoever took it apart previous doesn't understand this clip and they just wind up yanking it and destroying the cable. Since it's not disturbed that much, if it's not ripped, most of the time it can be put back in and taped down. Um, but just know that it's a simple push on this one. And then you have one more power connector here. Sometimes a sharp edge is what you need to help get this out without breaking wires like that okay so now we're all disconnected here we can go back to the other side of our board and this is where all the screws are at now something i like to do because inevitably i still mess up our top shell remember from our, our hard drive has two screws in it. So I always want to mark, you know, where the screws are at. And you can see this one's already missing screws. But if you put one here, even though there's an arrow to it, obviously when you go put the shell back on, it's going to be in the way. So let's go ahead and get out all these torque screws. Okay, our fan wire is out. This is our heat sink set of screws and it uses a number one Phillips. You can 
set that aside. Oh, we've got one left. Now on this particular model of PlayStation, all the silver ones are the same, so it makes it reassembly a bit easier. You can see the nicotine stains all through this. All that yellow is from nicotine. And this board doesn't have the captured power supply. Um, the boards that, that do, uh, remember that I said about the long bolts and the power supply, there will be a small flat nut that sits on the board right about here. But this one doesn't have it. There's our main board. And you can see all around the battery, all around the memory, around the USB ports. Everything is coated with dust. And everything down here in the fans coated with dust. But we'll take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and vacuum this all out and I'll be right back. Okay, so we vacuumed it all out, um, the board and, and uh, our shell that we could get to all around the corners. Now, since this one was overheating, I mean, it was known to overheat, we can't just stop at this point. Um, normally, if it was a normal cleaning in a service, I'd kind of just evaluate, and a lot of times I would stop here. But we do have quite a bit of dust, and, and we know that the fan was working pretty hard. So we need to go one step deeper. So this tin needs to come off, and there's not a whole lot of screws. Um, there's only a few Phillips screws, in it, and it should come up. But they're small, so you're going to be using you know, something like a, a zero or thereabout to get these last few screws out. And that'll give us access to the fan and uh, the heat sink. Let's see, I believe that's all of them. And then it's just kind of held in place with all these plastic pins. Yeah. But your antenna is caught on one You can see it here. Well, oh, where'd it go? Here. You have two little hooks that hold, kind of hold the antenna in. Now, this is why PlayStation 4s overheat. As you can see, it looked okay. This is even pretty deep. But for people that think they can just get in and vacuum out the corners and the crevices, there's no way that's gonna happen. That's the issue. And, and matter of fact, we just pulled a chunk of it off. You can see that the nicotine has built up in the fins and this has completely plugged our heat sink. That's why sometimes if you're unsure about the disassembly work and even though Obviously, me taking this apart here on, on camera, it doesn't look too bad. But there's some fiddly bits, there's some fragile bits. Um, if, but if you're unsure, you know, let somebody else do this for you. Um, in my shop, I only charge, uh, depending on the model, anywhere from $45 to $55 for a total cleaning um, and new thermal paste, which is a lot less money than just letting it run hot and then burning out a processor. <laughs> so um, anyway, you can see um, our fan is free. And this one isn't actually plugged up too bad. Um, but I mean, you can tell by that heat sink. So here again, I'm gonna do some vacuuming because I'm sure you don't wanna hear that on camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so we got our, um, I already set it aside. Uh, we got our heat sink cleaned out um, and in this case, this one was being pretty stubborn and I had to use a toothbrush to get in and, and scrape out everything I could find. Um, so our heat sink's clear now. But the other side of this was um, the discs weren't ejecting very well. So from here, we should get into our DVD drive. So just push on this tab here, wiggle out that cable, set it aside. We've got a few Phillips screws to get out, and they're small. So we'll just use a number zero. And 
And our antenna and our power wire can be unthreaded like that. And it is clipped from underneath. Let's see if we can get that out. And that tins out of the way. vacuuming needing done. I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Go ahead and get rid of these, we'll take these cables out. This one's just a pull. This one's just a pull. And this one has a bale on top. So you lift the bale and then it comes out. And that should get us in to the top of our drive. Or actually the bottom of our drive, but Like that. We don't have too much dust in there. We'll take our laser ribbon off also. Okay, this belt is sometimes the culprit if things aren't running right. Um, on a lot of the earlier Xboxes and whatnot, I'm starting to change them because they're fray and they, they're showing signs of distress but usually on these newer systems you just got to clean them with a little alcohol okay we can get our drive the rest of the way out from here right here. There we go. Oh, I missed the one in the corner. There we go. And it drives the rest of the way out. Now, the other side of this is this roller up here needs cleaned. So that can just be done with a little IPA. And we can use the gear here and roll it to a new section as I'm knocking gears out. There are times in some of these PS4s that um, the two halves actually come unseparated in the middle. This one's obviously still working, so we don't need to pull the, the, the top apart at all. Just need to do a little bit of a cleaning. And of course, you can see the mess on the front of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and back it. I'll be right back. Okay, we got that cleaned up and um, 
you know, we vacuumed up the, the front and around the edges and we cleaned the rollers. If you wanted to get into this part, you can just take out these three Phillips screws and this top tray will lift, lift right out. It's, it's not that big of a deal, but you can get to the rollers from the top pretty easy. Now, just a moment ago, I said that I'm knocking gears loose. And um, what it was is once this covers off, um, the manual eject screw can fall out with the spring. Um, and and that, what that allows you to do is you can open the top cover and you can put a screwdriver in there and you can push down on it and turn it and it'll turn the, the, the rollers. So anyway, if, if that falls out, it just goes right back down into this hole here um, and the spring goes on top. So from here, we can put our covers back on. And we might want to get a little closer to that to make sure our ribbon's down in there flat. Bail goes up. Ribbon goes in. Bail goes down. Pretty straightforward. I like that. This can sit back down in our hole. Like that. And we can line our board back up. There we go. Oops, still missed that front clip. Come on. There we go. Two front clips pushes in from the back. So we had one security bit in here. Now kind of hold us in place while we get our board lined up. Okay, and this board alignment is going to show you if you open, you know, from this side where this ribbon is going to sit. So go ahead and open the bail. Put it in, close the bail, and lay this down flat, and then you can put your sticker back in place. Okay. And then from there, it's just a reverse process. Put all our screws back in, and I will do that to save a little time, and I'll meet you on the other side of this board. All right, we got our drive all button back up and put back on our chassis. So now we need to revisit our heat sink side of the board, which oh, it's right here. So we've got all the junk pulled out of the fins and that can just sit down on the side for now. It goes in like that. Little capture under here, pins and uh, our heat sink. So now we need to get back these couple screws that hold this tin down you know these little rounded head ones Don't forget your wire needs to be out where it's 
easy to get to. All right, so now we need to clean up our old thermal paste. And uh, generally, the heatsink side is, you can see how brittle that is. Um, there's no pastiness to it at all anymore. Um, and basically when it gets like that, or it's turning to powder, it's just not gonna conduct any heat. Um, Q-tip, little alcohol. And it cleans our surface real nice. Okay. And as far as our board goes, kind of have to do the same thing. Now we gotta be a little bit careful because it's down around the chip and we kind of need to clean that up. I always use this chisel blade. You don't wanna gouge down into it. Just kind of get under it and lift it up just to you know, get the bulk of it out of our way. Like that. You can see how brittle it is. It's just breaking as I'm trying to pick it up. Okay. And then the same thing here, alcohol and a Q-tip. That should be a nice shiny surface when you're done. Now this old thermal grease is conductive. Um, so this shield is actually there to keep it out of these small resistors that are around uh, the chip. So you don't wanna get chunks of it down in there on accident. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Just use your Q-tip with some alcohol and it'll kinda melt and stick to the Q-tip. Okay that handy for a second. As you can see, bright and shiny. Now we need some thermal compound. Now this is one thing that people, there's a lot of debate, you know, different types, Arctic silver, you know, I've, I carry some of the specific brands if somebody asks for it. Um, but really any known good silver based thermal compound should be fine. And I've got recently just got two Xboxes in that were shorted out from somebody just glopping it on. You'll see a lot of guys saying, you know, you put it on, you use a credit card and you do a smear and you make it perfect. And well, you saw from the factory, that wasn't the case. It's not how they do it. Not to mention there's flexing in the board, there's flexing in this chassis. If you make a perfect little smear, and I'm not saying that the guys doing that are wrong by any means, but if you do that, and you haven't quite filled in all the gaps. And not to mention, that's not even a smooth surface. You know, you're leaving a lot unprotected. The reality is, all you need to do is put, and maybe not quite a BB sized dollop in the middle, but, you know, as one of our, one of, one of the other channels always say, Oh, the perfect amount. And the reality is that's all you need. Um, and we can, we can actually do a little demonstration here. Um, we can just take our board, make sure all our wires are out of the way, set it in there. 
make sure it goes in flat and push on this just like if the clamp was on it and give it a second. If we pick this up, you can see it will spread itself pretty good. We didn't even give a good full clamp to really push it out. But as you can tell, you know, not even a pea sized amount, um, bigger than a BB, smaller than a pea, um, is all you need. And, um, you know, this, like I said, it wasn't quite pushed out, you know, just within 30 seconds of that clamp being down on it tight, it would have pushed it out to all the corners. And that's really all you need. So let's go ahead and put this back together. Now, the one other thing you do have to keep an eye on are the, um, there we go, um, these thermal pads. You know, make sure that they're still on your chassis. Okay, our board's down. Here again, make sure this wire's out. Make sure we're all lined up. Which we are, there's plastic guide pins. And I like to start with the clamp. Some people don't, some people do. Fan wire just pushes straight in like that. Okay, from here, we can put in all of our uh, security screws. Yes, <laughs> needed to think of something. Okay, now we can address this side of the board again. We have our uh, CD-ROM or DVD-ROM uh, drive. Push the button, push the cable in, that's it. Our antenna goes between those two capture points. And line it up. Give it a snap, except I need to be a little closer. Like that. And our ROM power, like that. Okay. From there, we get our power supply. Now, like I was saying before, if this is plugged up with dust, which this one really isn't, a little bit in the corner, but no big deal, you'd want to vacuum uh, inside of here.
plug in the power, and then you've got these two pins here. And that pushes down like that. The two long screws go in the side with uh, these little ground straps. And the three security screws. This particular model, like I was saying, isn't that bad with the types of screws. Um, you know, they get very specific, like these long ones or these silver ones, or the black ones that are you know just on the back of our shell, or this big fat one that's our hard drive. Some of the other ones, like a PS4 Slim, um, you know, in this tin side. There's a bunch of different screws. And what I like to do, kind of like you know here, where I mark the one that I know needs to be out of the way for the top shell, I'll go in and I'll mark the black screws or the silver screws or, or whatever, some way of identifying. Because there's on that particular board, there's three different types of um, screws just in the tin. Some are machine thread, some are plastic thread. These, these silver ones are always for plastic. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind. So, before we put all the plastics on, because those are obviously the, the easiest part of all this, why don't we go ahead and make sure this guy works. Everything's looking good there. We don't want to plug the fan, so we want to make sure we got some gap there. And let's see, a two pin cord. There's a two pin cord. And let's change our input, HDMI one. Okay, uh, this is the one without a button. This is a touch board. So all you gotta do is touch the uh, little copper spot. Sorry about that. Um, we had some technical difficulties. Um, my cable had popped out of my TV. So anyway, I went ahead and uh, made sure our, uh, you know, our hard drive was in correctly. And, and uh, I popped our, our plastics back on just real quick um, in case I needed to get it in the safe mode. Um, I wanted to use the touching the, the actual sensor button and not just the circuit board. But as soon as I put the uh, plastics back on, <laughs> we came back to life. But the big thing now is, as I'm sitting here listening to it, we don't have any issues with, um, you know, that fan running at real, real high speeds. Um, and, uh, we can, uh, now, you know, at least just check our, our, DVD drive with a beater burn disc. And it seems like it's taking discs without a problem. Let's see if it ejects it. Which it does. Okay, so we're good there now too. So anyway, um, as you can see, we're uh, all back up and running. Um, which it should have been. This wasn't necessarily a broken console. It was just overheating and, and shutting down because of it. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions, why don't you go ahead and make comments down below. Um, I'll be happy to answer anything. Um, but if you do have a local service shop and they tell you it's going to be about $50 to do that kind of service, at least you know now and why. There's a lot of mess. There's a lot of dust. It takes a better part of an hour to do it. Um, and there's some materials involved. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Give us that thumbs up. And um, we'll catch you on that next video. Thanks.